later on Omen Family, how to break up with your inner critic. Reframe the negative. Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest is an international speaker, a leadership consultant, and the founder of Why Millennials Matter. She's here today with her new book, Dig Your Heels In. Please welcome to our home best-selling author, Joan Cool. Thank you. Thank you. What a great last yes. name. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Cool. Very cool. I'll live up to cool it. Try. <laughs> you actually really do live up to it. Aww. So this new book of yours is basically a playbook to help people get over old ideas of women's roles in society and sort of step into the 21st century. Isn't that the truth? You got it. Um, I wrote Dig Your Heels In because gender bias and stereotypes and prejudice, they still exist and they yeah. hold women back from getting what they deserve. And so I wanted to give her tools so that she could overcome it. But actually, more importantly, I also want her to role model it for our kids, for our daughters in particular, so that they don't accept this. You know, women are still not paid equally as men, and it's worse for women of color. You know, women aren't at the seat of the table where the biggest decisions are being made in business and in government. And, you know, women still have that pressure to behave like a good girl. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we do anything otherwise, we're looked at as hostile or cold or harsh. So mm -hmm. I want to change that. It's and, important, and yeah. it's about time. It's yeah. so important, and books like this are going to start uh, changing it for sure. It's changing, but there's so much more that we need to do. I know in your book you talk about strategies for overcoming self-limiting behaviors, and one that you call the uh, imposter syndrome. Is that Did I get that right? Totally. Okay, yes. so tell us what the imposter syndrome is and uh, how we can overcome it. Yeah, so imposter syndrome is that nagging feeling that you aren't worthy of something, or you don't deserve something. You don't raise your hand, you don't go after something you really want, whether that's a job, or even like being on the parent-teacher association. So everybody can experience it, women and men, but there's more consequences for women. I know for myself, I suffered from imposter syndrome and this good girl thinking in the workplace. Like, for example, I had this big presentation and that was a big deal for my company, but I had this all-male team that was pressuring me to come to this meeting, and I thought, oh, they need me. Come to find out, they just wanted me to take notes and really just organize them. I just wow. didn't have the tools <laughs> then, you know, to handle conflict or, you know, assert my voice. So here's my tips. Mm. When that evil DJ starts spinning your worst mm. hits in your brain, the first one is to own your success. So take out a piece of paper, you write down all the things that you're proud of, your accomplishments. This is for your eyes only, so you don't have to be insecure about anybody else judging you. Tuck it away, bring it out when those things start to, to rise up for you. The second is called reframe the negative. So again, when that evil critic is telling you things that you don't deserve, write it down. Spell it out on a piece of paper. And then on the other side, imagine that a friend was writing that. What would you say to them? So reaffirm mm -hmm. your strengths because the reality is probably not true. Mm -hmm. And that's how we control that inner critic. That's good stuff. That's right. right. It's true. Yeah, and it starts, it starts with us yes. in the home. And that's another big part of this book. You talk about the importance of changing the family dynamic within the home. Yeah. Well, so working women are still dealing with the double shift. But women that are stay at home, they don't deserve 100% of the responsibilities. And what happens is we get in this cycle where we're taking on so much that we burn out. And sometimes when we're asking our partner to change, change, mm. um, they're on the defensive. So I have this idea of having a weekly family board meeting or family meeting. You guys do that. Yeah, we do yeah, that. We do, we it. do that, yeah. yeah. So sometimes partners talk about finances, right? You're saving for vacation. But imagine if you involved your children, you could talk about the week ahead and really just think about their needs. And so, for example, my daughter loves to remind me that my husband is way better at making her favorite sandwich. It's Italian. Mine does the same thing. Yeah, it's like a huge <laughs> sandwich that's like all the greasy meats and like you don't eat that sandwich every day. Funny, I don't get that in my house, but good, good for him. It's delicious, but you don't get it every day. But let's say two days a week, he commits to making her lunch. He's got to shop for the ingredients okay. and everything else, and it takes it off my plate. So that's just an example of getting together and, and showing partnership as a family. And right. as a family, the kids, and obviously giving them responsibility for maybe helping out in ways that they can sure. as well. This yeah. morning, I left a whole note for my son of things that he's got to do before I get home. I was like, it's summertime. Yeah. I'm like, right. my wife and my daughter are away, and I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to sort of have that going. Exactly. Same idea anyway, yeah, even though it's just the two of us. Yeah. And it's also great that you're doing that with your son because he will grow up to be a man that then will take some of those responsibilities off sure. of his wife's plate. That's the point. It's so important. That is the absolute plan. Yeah. That's a great point, Deb, it's for true, sure. Uh, now, I know that you were raised by a single mom and she was an incredible role model for you. So yeah. how, how are you kind of 
passing along that role model for your daughters, for your kids? Yeah, so my mom, uh, it was just the two of us for a chunk of our ch my childhood, really the early years, and she really role modeled courage and taking risks. So she was an inner city school teacher in Philadelphia. Then she got her pilot's license, all to become an air traffic controller, which is not an easy place for women oh to advance. Wow. Yeah. So I have a six-year-old and a one-year-old daughter, yep. two daughters right now, and I take my daughter to my speaking engagements, and she was sitting right next to me when I wrote Dig Your Heels In, and we talked about it, and she believes that girls and women, that they deserve to be strong and powerful and, and compassionate, and they deserve everything, but we also talk about the history of what it took to get there. Um, so the, the one thing that I really care about, too, is girls' leadership. So I've always been involved in these organizations. I sit on the board of Girls, Inc., so my daughter and I, and I encourage others to look into this, we took a course together called Girl and Her Grown Up. And, you know, you're learning about things that are appropriate for a kindergartner, like navigating friendships at school. And there was this moment, um, you know, after we'd taken the class, where she got invited to go ice skating with a group of friends. And she does not know how to ice skate, okay? They all had been taking lessons. They were really good. And she believed that Peppa Pig taught her, like, push, push, glide. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, watching her go out there and she starts and she was so confident and she's skirting around and it was heartbreaking. She's holding on to the side, but then she had this breakthrough moment and she starts oh. talking to herself. It was positive self-talk. And I mean, those are the moments where I I'm like, just I know, you yeah. should be so That's proud of beautiful. yourself. Yeah. Oh, and she went on beautiful. to like try roller skating and three hours of red face sweaty trying to do that. She played lacrosse. She does coding. You know, golf and, you know, forget the overscheduling. We can talk about that Wait, another coding? time. Yeah, yeah. yeah she like codes. computer coding? Yeah, coding She's in sick. kindergarten. I yeah. thought I heard that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that kind of rolled through and I was wow. like, oh, yeah. what? Oh, yeah. You should have led with that. She's like just jumping into things, but it doesn't mean that she's great at them or going to no. do them forever. But I well, love her Yeah, but she has the self-confidence, yeah. and that's what's so important. And if we can teach our children and our daughters today, yes. they won't feel the way that we ever did growing Absolutely. up. Absolutely. That's the hope. Thank you so much, Joan. Dig Your Heels In is available wherever books are sold, and you can get more information at hallmarkchannel.com and connect with Joan on her website. Absolutely. The snack <laughs> in your I'm fridge sorry, should be the one that you're applying to your skin and your hair. Come on back, and we'll tell you what we're talking about.